Welcome everyone to Let's Get Lit, the show where we discuss your literature text to give you a better understanding. Today we're going to be looking further at Tijan and his brothers and we'll be focusing on act two. In studio today we have our presenters who I will ask to introduce themselves. Good evening everyone, I'm Miss Galab. Good evening, everyone. Um, Miss Pommels. Welcome, ladies. Thank you for joining us again for a discussion to help our students just to understand this text, Tijan and his brothers. Now, you know how we do it, guys. I'm going to be asking you two questions, and I hope that you're ready to answer them. All right. So, Miss Galab, what did Mijan do to the animals in the forest? Well, Miss Brown, so Mijan, when he got into the forest, even though the mother had, you know, encouraged them to listen to the animals, he was quite disrespectful to them. So he was talking down to them or he was being quite condescending. So he told the bird not to disturb him. Um, you know, he was making too much noise whistling and he told the cricket not to question him because he's a big man. Thank you, Miss Galab. Miss Pommels, what did Mijan want to be in life? All right, Miss Brown. So Mijon stated that he wanted to be a rich sea captain, and after that, he would become a lawyer. Thank you so very much, Miss Pommels. All right, guys, let's just get into our discussion. So last week, we discussed Act 1 of the play, Tijan and his brothers, and this week, we're going to be taking a close look at Act 2. It's a fairly short act. So the analysis for this week is going to be a bit shorter than it was last week. So I'm going to summarize act two for you. And I'm asking you to remember to take your notes, guys. It's always important to take your notes. Remember, you can pause the video at any time to jot down your notes. All right. So let's recap some of the things that, we, that, were, done, that were done last week in act one. So each child was to go to the plantation and work for the devil and ensure that they outsmarted him. Before Grosjean left, his mother begged him not to go, but he stated that he was a man and that he had to leave home to prove that he was a man. Now it was Mijan's turn. We can imagine, even though it was not stated in Act 2, we can imagine that the mother pleaded with Mijan as well as she, when she pleaded with um, Grosjean that she was asking him to just listen to the animals and take direction from them and just to be careful of the old man of the forest. We can assume based on our experience in act one that Mijan may not have listened to his mother. So he, just like his brother, believed that he did not need help from anyone in order to defeat the devil. Mijan verbally was calling them ugly, that was the frog, as well as to state that they could not talk to him because animals were supposed to be quote unquote dumb creatures and he was a smart man. Now we know that Mijan and Grosjean had one thing on their minds and that was to become rich. Mijan met his fate because he was too smart. When he met the devil who was in disguise, he told him that he would beat the devil when he met him with silence. So for a while, he did not say anything at all to the white planter when he was working for him. The devil allowed him to be outsmarted by Amelia the goat, who was as mischievous as her owner. The devil allowed the goat to get loose from the ropes that Mijan had put her in each time. And at one point he had Mijan chasing the goat which eventually made Mijan extremely furious. He began to make statements about being smarter than all the animals and that the goat was essentially stupid. His anger towards the goat created a loophole for the devil to defeat him. The devil revealed that because the goat was his and Mijan was angry at the goat, it meant that Mijan was angry at him and so the devil 
et mejan. Now we're going to ask Ms. Pommels to give us just a quick review of some of the dramatic techniques in Act 2. All right, good evening again, everyone. And before I begin, I would just like to say that you must remember that the techniques that we're about to discuss, they are not the only ones that you'll see in the play. So we're going to start with the use of song. And in this act, we're going to look at Mijon's Song of Silence. And through this Song of Silence, we saw where Mijon, or we were able to understand Mijon's plan to defeat the devil. He stated that he planned to use, or you plan just to be silent and smile. He also explains that the wisest thing a man can do is to keep silent. His song of silence can be viewed as an imitation of the proverbial principle of see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. And this is a strategy he had planned on employing to defeat the devil. We also see the use of disguise in this act again. Remember that disguise is used throughout the play. And in this um, act, we would see where through the disguise of the benevolent old man who was the devil, he was able to gain Mijon's trust. And initially, when Mijon met him, he was kind of doubtful because he called him by his name. And so he had this idea that this might be the devil, but the devil knew that Mijon liked to be praised. And that's what he used, he praised him. So he said that who in the Heights have never heard of Mijon the jurist. And because one of Mijon's greatest flaw was the fact that he liked to be seen as an intellect, he allowed this no to sway him and he let down his guard and exposed his plan on how he intend to be the devil to this old man. Also, the next technique that we'll be looking at is humor. And this is illustrated in act two through the use of language. And that is the language Mizon chooses to model and that is of the patronizing English man. He used words such as bugger and graft. He also used elaborate words to explain simple ideas, but yet still he was not aware or he did not know the meaning of simple words like hence. Also, he used these words to set himself apart from the common man and to prove that he was knowledgeable beyond the ordinary. Even though he wanted to appear sophisticated through the demonstration of his language, he was easily manipulated by the devil with language. We also saw humor when he tried to use his book to check the meaning of the man with cow foot. And we saw all that he was coming up with recipes. So he, in his wisdom, thought that the book that he had could give him the meaning or understanding of everything that was there out in the world. Also, we saw humor through the bleating and the constant chasing of the goat, as Mijon was constantly interrupted means sentences by this goat. And there in the discussion for act two techniques. And please remember that we have not exhausted all techniques. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Pommels. And you know something in, in, your, in your discussion of humor, you're, you've touched on the theme of education. I, I want to just briefly go into, you spoke about the language aspect of it and the fact that Mijan was using this recipe book. So even though it's funny, it's very significant and it's, it's a good example of the theme of education because even though he wanted to be rich and he had that get rich quick mentality as his brother Grajan, 
we realized that he knew that having some form of education was very important. So Mijan thought that because he was a reader, and mind you, he was a reader of one book, which was a recipe book, that he was too educated and too smart to listen to anybody. So he had knowledge based on what was in the book that he had. However, he was not that advanced. As when the old man slash devil used the word hence, and Ms. Pommers mentioned that earlier, when he used the word hence, Mijan had no idea what that word meant. And the old man had to explain to him what it was, or he used some synonyms to, to, to explain to him what the word hence meant. Now, before Mijan took that correction in mind, he just completely changed the subject. Um, we know that the devil knew that Mijan did not understand what he was saying, and this was a ploy to get Mijan upset. And again, instead of Mijan getting upset because he didn't know the meaning of that word, he just quickly moved on to something else. Mijan's quote-unquote education did not help him because reading without understanding was his biggest flaw. In his arrogance, he did not realize that this would be his downfall. You see, Mijan loved to argue because he wanted to be a lawyer and he debated a lot, right? And he didn't understand that when you argue, you must argue with a purpose. You must have meaning when you're arguing. You must be able to meet your opponent halfway and discuss matters of fact and back it up with some evidence. Mijan could not do that. So because Mijan lacked comprehension and reasoning skills, the devil used all of this against him. So the education that he had or the reading skills that he had did not help him in any way in any of the events in Act 2. Uh, now we're going to ask Ms. Galap to do a brief post-colonial reading of Act 2. Thank you, Ms. Brown. So um, let us go and look now at the post-colonial aspect of things. So remember, when we think about post-colonial, we're thinking about issues dealing with race, and oppression of the black man or black people. So here again, we have the devil disguised as the old man and he's challenging Mijan about his intellect and he disrespects him by continuing to address him in a derogatory manner, much in the same way that he did Gwajan. So the devil basically figures out what you know each brother's weakness is and he uses it against him. So he compares Mijan to an animal when they're arguing and you know they argue about whether or not humans are smarter than animals the old man knows that Mijan feels that he's intelligent and so he tries to aggravate Mijan by telling him that we humans are just as dumb as animals he even goes further to state or say to the uh, Mijan that descendants of the ape how eloquent you have become and yet poor shaving monkey the animal in you is still in evidence so he refers to him as ape and monkey so remember that first he called Rajan a dog and now he's calling Mijan a monkey and I'm sure we're all aware that white racists commonly refer to black people as monkeys and we can see that the devil here is pretty much doing the same thing and when he's talking in a very derogatory or condescending way to Mijan. Okay, Ms. Brown, so I hand back over to you now. Thank you, Ms. Galab. And it's just interesting, ladies, to see um, from, just from, a, 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 let's say I'm just a regular person, just a student, when, I, when you analyze just the post-colonial nature of this text, you don't really get it when you're reading the text until you do a close reading of the text to see that even the poor shaving monkey I was reading this text as a student I never thought of it I just thought it was funny but thank you so very much Miss Galab for that interesting and on point analysis and Miss Pommels as well thank you so very much for that students thank you so very much for joining us today and as always keep it lit <laughs>